Alright guys, today is something a little bit newer. Normally I'm renowned for doing older classic kits as I might call them, like the Airfix and uh, Matchbox range. But today I'm doing Plastic Soldier Company's German Half-Track SDKFZ 251, the C variant. The 251 itself uh, had its origins in the same requirements as the, the previous uh, SDKFZ 250, um, but the 251 was a, basically a heavier vehicle. Uh, entered service with the uh, Wehrmacht and all that in uh, 1939 and basically was intended as an uh, armoured personnel carrier. Um, so it turned out to be quite a useful vehicle obviously enough and there was, as far as I know, 22 special purpose variants um, which were manufactured. So you literally had uh, anti-tank guns, flamethrowers, communication vehicles, ambulances, searchlights, all sorts of things. Um, now it was a little bit unreliable at the start of its uh, service but um, it ended up being produced by the thousands and uh, used on all fronts and um, it was kind of a trademark really of the uh, German Panzer formations um, and I mean you can see all in the footage of, uh, of the, from the period you know, this particular vehicle will, will feature heavily. Um, anyway that's, uh, that's that but the uh, box itself here as you can see um, lovely artwork there by Plastic Soldier Company I really like the fact that they've kind of gone for a classic look with the artwork there um, can't see an artist's name on the uh, the uh, packaging at all, unfortunately. But there you go. Um, now the great thing about these uh, Plastic Soldier Company um, vehicles is that they are a fast build, quick build, rapid assembly, whatever you want to call it, um, kit, and they are in one seven two, of course. But you get three vehicles and a multitude of crew figures. Um, there is a little bit of assembly required, as it states in the bottom right-hand corner of the box there. Um, but as it states in the top right-hand corner of the box, it says, Finest quality assured. I don't know why that says that there. I mean, surely you expect that you release something with the finest quality you can possibly manufacture to your best of your resources. But however, um, so the kit itself, very straightforward. Um, it's a joy to put together. I mean, really, really speaking for me, it bridges the gap between uh, a decent model kit and a uh, fast assembly, which are normally quite basic, the likes of Armour Fast, which I quite like. Uh, one of my other videos there, um, my young lad put together uh, his uh, 251s, they were the Armour Fast, and I thought they came out quite well. Um, as regards scale, the Armour Fast and the Plastic Soldier Company um, match up quite well together, as they do with the Hasegawa and those. Not so much with the Matchbox one, um, which would be the uh, Revel 176 release, uh, as we'd know today. But, uh, as I said, a 172, not 176, so you'd expect a little bit of variance in that. Um, the instructions, highly complex instructions, so not for the faint-hearted, <laughs> as you can see. Um, very straightforward. I mean, I, just, it's it's moments, really, to be honest with you. I mean, getting the cap off the glue and putting the cap back on the glue is about the, uh, the slowest part of this really to be honest um now myself i don't bother with the driver figures or any of the crew figures because i do my own thing but um you know paint the driver before you put him in that's the only suggestion i'd make um very easy um excellent for kit bashing really really just uh, a, a joy to put together very simple um that is the extent of the uh, instructions i don't know why they didn't bother just uh, print it on the back of the box it would have been easier and probably cheaper however the box itself uh, on the back shows some uh, colours for the Vallejo or Vallejo or whatever um, pronunciation you choose on that one. I think it's Vallejo, but anyway. Um, so this is just in a kind of a standard Panzer Grey sort of a gunmetal uh, kind of colour there. Um, early war sort of a colour uh, scheme there, um, which is uh, correct for the vehicle because this is the earlier variant. Uh, we'll be doing a review on the uh, D variant um, and the uh, other 251 variants, such as the flamethrower and that, uh, later on. So, um, that's it. That's the box. I mean, very straightforward. The usual warnings, you know, don't eat the half-track, um, result in choking, that type of thing. Um, straightforward. Can't complain. That's uh, that's the box. So, let's have a look at the sprue. Let's the box out of the way momentarily. Uh, sprue there, as you can see, uh, for such a basic kit, comes in a nice little bit of stuff, I have to say. Um, a lot of crew members there, and seated position, uh, and some various kit and caboodle, such as a Panzer Shrek, which um, I have actually utilised on some uh, figure conversions. Um, you might have seen my um, 
uh, matchbox NATO paratroopers who I converted to um, as close to World War II standards as I could get. Uh, I used one of those uh, Panzer Schrecks and one of the uh, Car 98 rifles there in the top right hand corner of that sprue uh, in that conversion. So handy little pieces to have. Um, I mean you get three of these sprues in the box so you don't have to use all the stuff, you can utilise it for other projects as well. Um, nice thing about it as well is they come with the 37mm uh, pack anti-tank gun for the command um, command vehicle variant which I think is the SDKFZ251-10 uh, maybe. Um, so anyway, uh, one piece track system, uh, a joy, oh, I love one piece track systems. Um, as I say, I don't mind vinyl tracks, but I really abhor the uh, separate track links, especially on small kits, as I've mentioned before in one of my videos. Um, just, it's nerve-wracking, to be honest. But, um, this particular one, anyway, uh, as you said, you have the upper hull section, lower hull sections there as well. Um, very, very easy. Uh, ammo, stowage bins, that type of thing. Uh, crew members there. You have the guy which operates the MG34, as it is with the uh, 251-C, because it's the earlier variant. The 42 obviously hadn't been released because it wasn't 1942. Um, so uh, campaigns 39 onwards, um, up to that point, it would have been equipped with the 34, uh, MG34. 7.92 millimeter um, light machine gun. Um, anyway, so you have the crewmen there, uh, separate pieces, stick them together with a little bit of super glue or something like that, and they're fine. Nice detail on the figures as well. I'm not sure if that's picking up on the camera, but a nice little sculpt. Um, just turn it over, see if we can get the other side of that guy. Uh, focus, come on. There we go. Kind of. Um, but yeah, nice little sculpt in it. Um, you can even see the. Uh, the uh, what's that ventilation uh, holes on the gun barrel there? Not sure if you can see it, but it is there. Uh, detail in the seat uh, for the back of the crew members there, and uh, nice poses for the um, seated crew uh, crewmen who are done in a sort of a standard uh, Wehrmacht um, uniform um, of the period, the earlier war period. That is a little bit of stowage there along, a little bit of a you know personal kit, uh, that kind of stuff for the crew members. Dangle that on the side, just sticking on the side of the vehicle quite nice as i say it comes with the 37 millimeter um uh, pack 35 30 whatever it is um anti-tank gun for the command version um which you will get three of of course because there's uh, three sprues so if you're if you're not using them uh quite handy for um building little uh i think they were, might have been called to brooks um if you're doing a uh, atlantic uh, wall scenario you could uh bash them into a little bit of a kit bash thing for um, coastal fortifications um, or anything of that nature uh, or even just converting other vehicles so it's nice to have a little bit of an option there as well same with the gun shield there as well they use that kind of thing for the coastal defences as well with the uh, 34s or 42s dropped into them um, there's the aforementioned uh, MG34 there so you have the uh, the lower section of the sprue that's the one that goes into the gun shield and of course the one at the back has the uh, traversable gun mount uh, for the, uh, the rear position, so that's that. Very straightforward, as I say. Um, nice detail on it. I must say they they are quite uh, quite nicely done. Um, no flash. Very very good sculpt. Very solid plastic as well. I mean, they um, they're quite good. The injection molding marks are minimal. They're in nicely strategically placed uh, areas where they can be trimmed or filled if necessary, and. Um, basically top marks to a uh, plastic soldier company i mean these really are a nice little uh, little piece uh, god i mean 25 years ago or 20 25 years ago when i got back into wargaming um or into kit building and then subsequently war wargaming uh, these would have been a dream i would have god i would have, I'd have given my right arm for these things but uh they weren't there at the time uh, but they are now as i say i don't normally buy uh, kits um because i have a stash in the attic of uh, old things from way back then um but as I say, I came across these um, a few months back and I said, look, it's a long time since I bought something and uh, I'm going to pick them up um, because myself and my son were um, getting into the uh, rapid fire wargaming. So um, we said we'd get a few bits and pieces and uh, sell them together and that. So that's what we did. Speaking of which, um, let's have a look at a couple of the assembled vehicles. Now, I have done these in... A sort of a late war Normandy style camo pattern, um, which isn't say, specific to uh, any particular unit. That's kind of a general sort of a thing I did um, because we'll be doing different scenarios and it's just kind of a 
so generic sort of a camouflage. I mean, it's actually taken from um, an Airfix King Tiger uh, color scheme um, that he was doing. Um, but what I did was I just added the uh, the dots there, or like P dots or whatever it was they were called. I can't remember. Kind of ambush camouflage. Uh, I think that was what they called it anyway, ambush camouflage. Um, so basically, this, these units aren't completely finished yet as regards the painting and weathering and all the rest of it, but um, they're not looking too bad. I kept the interiors nice and simple, just did the base coat, um, and uh, I tend to kind of make a bit of a rub of a 2B pencil for kind of uh, chipping and all that kind of stuff. So that was that. Uh, there's the 37mm uh, the um, anti-tank gun, uh, and the MG34 in the rear there. You can see the uh, the ventilation holes there, and you have the, uh, the magazine um, as opposed to being belt fed. I mean, it was belt feedable, <laughs> for want of a better term, um, but uh, they have the uh, magazine on that. Um, you'll notice that the back of this has a slightly more angled um, kind of appearance. The D model, um, which I'll be reviewing in a while, uh, had a kind of slightly more flat uh Sort of appearance, even though it was, it was more angular in one sense, but it didn't have that kind of pointy bit out there. I think that was just for ease of manufacture, really, to be honest with you. Um, armor on these things, I think, ran from about got uh, six or six or seven millimeters up to about fourteen or fifteen millimeters. So, you know, wouldn't be stopping a tank round, but um, it would protect you from uh, you know bullets and shrapnel and that kind of thing. Um, so that's the command version. This is just the uh, the regular uh, regular one. Um, yeah, straightforward. Again, you know, focus there, just about. Yeah, here we go. So uh, that's basically what we did. I, I don't put crew members into them, generally speaking, um, because I just don't like it. Um, I prefer to have the uh, the uh, figures that I'm um, wargaming with. Uh, I can kind of incorporate them into it if I want to kind of uh, sculpt a crew member out of... Uh, an existing piece or whatever I can do so and it'll match in with whatever battalion I'm doing as I say these guys will, will serve with uh, various battalions for various scenarios we'll be doing once I have them finished of course there's a little bit of work to be done on these but um, nice very very simple little models uh, I really really can't say enough about them um, in a sense that they're just they're a great foundation for uh, we're going to do um, a bit more detailing on them, um, adding bits and pieces or whatever it is. Um, again, ideal for dioramas or just general wargaming or modeling or whatever it is you want to get up to. Um, and very, very, uh, I won't say inexpensive, I mean, a good value. I think they retailed at approximately, off the top of my head, about 20 euros, including post uh, from the UK to. Uh, the wilds of Tipperary um, here in Ireland um, so look couldn't go wrong uh, value for money uh, even on a budget uh, 20 euros for three uh, very very good quality detail models isn't bad in anyone's book so that is the uh, quick review for the plastic soldier company German half track SD KFZ 251 C variant I'll get on to the D and the other variants um, another time but for now that's it over and out guys take care